Hey guys, this is Michael from Concrete Chemistry. In today's video, we'll be going over how to predict the products of acid-base reactions. Acid-base reactions, these can be broken down into two general categories based on the makeup of the base. If you look at the base and the base contains a metal, then you're going to approach this problem as if it was a double replacement reaction and use that to help you predict the products. But if you look at the base and it does not contain a metal, then you're going to use the definitions of bronsodiluary acid and bronsodiluary base to help you predict the products by showing the transfer of electron protons from the acid to the base. Let's jump into some examples and reinforce this idea. So first example, we have magnesium hydroxide reacting with hydrobromic acid. We want to take a look at the base. This is the acid, and we know that because it has an H in the front, so this is the base. Look at the base, and we're looking if it contains a metal or not. Magnesium is a metal. So since it contains a metal, we're going to approach this as if it were a double replacement reaction. First of all, I'm just going to put the charges so I'm aware of what the charge of each of the ions are. Magnesium is a positive 2 charge, hydroxide negative 1, Pro H is a positive 1 charge, and Br is a negative 1 charge. For a double replacement, we're, we're going to take the positive charges and we're going to essentially just have them switch places. So we get the Mg going with the Br. I'm going to transfer the charges over so I can check if they cancel out or not. Mg has a positive 2 charge, Br has a negative 1 charge. They don't cancel out, so I can use the crisscross method here to make this a neutral compound. The 1 comes down here, so there's 1 magnesium, and the 2 comes down here, so there's going to be 2 bromines. Then I'm going to have this react. And then the second product is going to be the H with the OH, which just forms water. So those are going to be your two products. Uh, after this, you can balance it, and you, you'll get the final reaction. So next one, we have NH3 reacting with HNO3. This is the acid because that's the H in front, so then this must be the base. We want to look at the base and see if, there, if it contains a metal. This one does not contain a metal, so that means it's, if it's that second, criteria, that second category. We're going to show the transfer of protons from the acid to the base. So the acid is going to give up an H+, plus. essentially that's called a proton, and then the base is going to pick that up. And then that's going to help us predict the products. When NH3 picks up an H+, plus, now it becomes NH4 and with a positive charge because it also it was originally neutral, then it picks up a positive charge, so the product's going to be positive charge. And then when HNO3 loses an H+, plus, you get O3 and it has a negative charge. Now it has a negative charge because before it was neutral and then it lost a positive charge, so you're left with a negative charge. Let's take it up a, a step and let's take a look at something that seems like a little bit more complicated, but it's it's really not too bad. Here we have H3PO4 reacting with sodium acetate. Uh, we first know that this is going to be the acid because that's the H in the front. This is then going to be the base. We look at the base to see if there's a metal or not. Sodium is a metal, so we're going to approach this as if we're a double replacement reaction. First label the charges, H is positive 1. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion with a charge of negative 3. Sodium has a positive 1 charge. And then acetate is a polyatomic ion with a charge of negative 1. Take my two positive charges, I switch places. So I get HCH3COO. Notice that while I did have three H's on the left-hand side over here, I only took one H over. And the main reason why I did that is because I, I want to just make sure the charges cancel out. If they don't, then I can use the crisscross method to help to cancel out. So I carry my charges over. H has a positive one charge. Acetate, if we look at the side, had a negative one charge. These charges cancel out, so that means I really just needed one and one. Then the second product is going to be the Na going with the PO4. So I have Na, PO4, carry the charges over. Na is a positive one charge. PO4 was 3 minus charge, these don't cancel out, so I used the crisscross method, meaning I'm going to have 3 sodiums for every 1 phosphate. And then, last example, we have water reacting of CH C6H5NH2. This time, to help us predict the, the acid in the base, uh, acids usually have H in front, or it has a positive charge, so since this one doesn't have an H in front nor a positive charge, I mean this one's probably going to be the base and water's then going to act as an acid. So since water is acting as an acid, water is going to donate a proton, and then the base is going to accept that proton. When water donates the proton, you're left with OH minus, 
hydroxide. And then when the base picks up a proton, you get C6H5NH3 with a positive charge. Because it was neutral originally, and then it picked up a positive charge. So there you have it. We just went over the two ways to help us predict the products of acid-base reactions, and then we went through four examples. If you want to learn how to ace chemistry, if you want to learn what's the best way to study for this class, if you want to learn some neat tricks and tips to take into your exam and do better on them, then you should head over to my website and get this free guide, uh, 12 Secrets to Ace in Chemistry. You can head over to www.conquerchemistry.com slash chemsecrets. I'm going to include a link in the description below. Check it out. I think it's really going to help you, and you're going to, you're going to like it. Until next time, keep working hard and continue the good work.